I am Robert Largent, the environmental engineer for the Exchange or the Army and Air Force Exchange Service, APHIS. This training is on how to inspect the equipment at the FE Warren Express. Our agenda, introducing this location. Explain ECAP inspections and how the ECAP inspections protect your location. Starting outside with the forecourt, you will learn how to inspect a dispenser. Then move into the store and look at the fuel checklist poster, binders, and Vida route. Introduction Here is the link to the Shop My Exchange website for this location with the store hours and contact information, as of April 2023. This is the main Insight 360 webpage for this facility. There are three 10,000 gallon double wall fiberglass tanks here. Tank number one is diesel. Tank number two is unleaded. Tank number three is premium unleaded. These three tanks were installed in July 1995. Here are two aerial views of this location. And here's an aerial view of the tank pit. This is F.E. Warren Air Force Base. There are three tanks here. The furthest tank is super unleaded, middle tank is regular unleaded, and the nearest one is diesel. This site only has one vent pipe. Normally the diesel tank has its own vent pipe. The diesel tank might have been changed from an unleaded to diesel. All three vent pipes may be manifolded underground. There are three STP sump lids. They have pylons on them to keep customers from driving over them. There are six dispensers here. This is your fuels and environmental teams. Pause the video here to find the contact for any questions that you have. This diagram shows the funding source for repairs and maintenance for each area of an exchange gas station system. Repairs and maintenance of equipment below ground is the military's responsibility to pay for. This includes tanks, sumps, sensors, piping leak detectors and any other equipment below ground. The military is also responsible for any testing or maintenance of equipment that is required to meet environmental requirements. Dispenser maintenance and repair are an exchange responsibility unless the work on the dispenser is required by environmental regulations, or the facility is remote and isolated. Refer to the October Tank Talk email for more information. ECAP stands for the Environmental Compliance Assessment Program. The ECAP program is intended to prevent a notice of violation or NOV being issued at an exchange facility. Loss Prevention Associates inspect exchange facilities, utilizing an inspection checklist to determine if environmental compliance is being met. The checklist LP uses when they do inspections is designed to check for the top five most frequently issued NOVs. ECAP inspections ensure that you are doing what has to be done to maintain environmental compliance and avoid having your site shut down. If you fail an ECAP inspection it doesn't have the punitive repercussions of an NOV from the state. Your site is not shut down and you can correct any deficiencies discovered during an ECAP inspection before a UST inspector discovers them. ECAP inspection findings are serious, fix these deficiencies when they are identified. Avoid having your store closed. The driveways and parking lots of gas stations are dangerous. Be safe. Wear bright highlighted safety vests or clothes. Inspecting with a partner can help you to stay safe. One person to watch traffic and customers and one to do the inspection. Use a vehicle with flashing lights on to block traffic. Especially in a high traffic area, during a high traffic time of day. For example, rethink inspecting a tank pit in the Burger King drive through at lunchtime. This is me, at a gas station with my bright yellow shirt and big orange pylons. And, yes, that pylon has been run over by a customer and not just once. Maybe I should have said, customers. And this is why I recommend using a vehicle to blockade traffic and inspecting the tank pit during deliveries. This is David, doing a UST inspection for the Cherokee Nation. He dislocated his shoulder lifting this manhole cover. Some manhole covers can exceed 100 pounds, or get wedged into place, and are always very cumbersome. Associates should not open one of these manholes covers. The installation should have the tools and experience to open STP sumps. After a delivery, look in your spill bucket and make sure there's no product left in it. The big ol' semi-truck there, with all the trucker's safety gear set up, should protect you from being run over. Every 30 days look closer for any holes in the spill bucket. 
let's discuss how to do walkthrough inspections. The fuel system checklist poster must be prominently displayed. The poster lists the equipment that you are inspecting during your daily, weekly, and monthly walkthrough inspection checklists. The equipment that must be inspected every 30 days is listed on the monthly walkthrough inspection checklist. The annual and three year tests are the responsibility of the installation. To avoid getting shut down, we highlight the annual and triennial columns to remind you to remind the installation to pay a technician to complete these tests. Create a calendar reminder for yourself when these tests are due, then submit a work order to the installation to complete these tests. Annual testing is expected to be done by a technician contracted for the installation and paid for by APF. For unmanned sites, every time the site gets a delivery, do a daily inspection of the site. Daily inspections should be done whenever the site is open or whenever there's an associate on site. If you discover an issue inside any sump or with any underground equipment, please submit a work order to the installation to get it fixed. Here are the things that you are looking at each month. Does the VEDA route have any alarms? Have you filed all your passing release detection compliance reports in your binder? Are all the walkthrough checklists completed and filed in your binder? Every year ensure binders have 12 months worth of completed walkthrough checklists and 12 monthly passing release detection reports. The outside of the dispenser is covered by the stage one vapor inspection checklist. Basically what you're looking at is the nozzles, the hoses, the breakaways, the display, the card reader, the overall area looks in the dispenser. Dispenser sumps, we call those the under dispenser containment sumps or the UDC sumps. Under dispenser containment sumps, they're designed to protect the piping that goes into the dispenser. They're also designed so that any fuel that comes from the dispenser will be contained and not enter the environment. This is the view under a dispenser. When you take the front panel off the dispenser, you can often see inside the plastic looking containment area, the yellow area at the bottom, that has to be there to keep any liquids from getting into the ground. The metal pieces that are going across that area, these are your supports. They should be anchored firmly to the, the concrete and the dispenser containment area underneath. And then attached to those are your shear valves, also called fire valves and crash valves because they serve multiple purposes. And then you have your dispenser filters underneath there. And the one thing you want to make sure is you check the dates on those dispenser filters. And also put your fingers underneath them sometimes. If you see any leaking or liquids under them, it may be an indication that the dispenser filters are old or they need to be changed out or they weren't properly threaded on. We are outside at the forecourt of F.E. Warren. This is the dispenser where customers pump fuel into their vehicles. Most customers call this the pump. First, look at the hanging hardware. Hanging hardware is the nozzles, the hoses, and the breakaways. Then, look at the outside of dispenser, the displays, the card reader, and pavement around the area. Every 30 days remove the panels on both sides of the dispenser. Look under the dispenser at the equipment there. Look at the filters under the dispenser. Touch under the filter, look for any fresh liquids that might indicate a leak from the filter. The filter might have a date written on it to indicate the last time it was replaced. Refer to EOP31-01 for replacement frequency for dispenser filters. Look at the bottom of the dispenser sump. Make sure it is dry. Look at the piping and determine if there are any leaks into the sump. Check the sensor, the gray tube, make sure it is straight up and down and flat on the bottom of the sump. The shear valves must be anchored in place by being attached to steel brackets bolted into the dispenser or island. The shear valves have a poppet inside and are designed to close and shut off the flow of fuel from the tank if the dispenser gets knocked over, if there is a fire near or in the dispenser, or if you need to manually stop the flow of fuel. The bottom of the sump sensor should be flat and flush with the bottom of the under dispenser containment or UDC sump, so that it will alarm as quickly as possible. If the store allows pumping fuel after closing then a UDC sump alarm should shut all power to the dispensers. Look closely at the card readers. Skimming is a frequent crime outside the gates and we cannot take it for granted that thieves will not target our dispensers. That is all there is to looking at the dispensers. 
This is an example of why LP does ECAP inspections at our gas stations annually. During a recent ECAP inspection, LP discovered that there were no written documentation of the e-stop being tested at this location. An accident occurred. The site was not staffed. Fuel leaked from a hose during a customer transaction. And then the e-stop did not function. And they had to call the fire department out. And finally, they were able to get the fuel leak to stop. But in the meantime, they lost over 24 gallons worth of fuel onto the ground, making it much more of an incident than it should have been if the e-stop was functioning. This is an example of an incident where the e-stop might have been useful. Let's play the what if game. If you were a customer and you were getting gas at this dispenser and there was a fire, is the signage enough to help you find the emergency shut off switch? Regulatory guidance for these signs is not very useful. NFPA 30A Part 9.5.3 says, Emergency signage shall be conspicuously posted in the dispensing area. Conspicuously means, in a clearly visible way or in a way that attracts notice or attention. Sites that operate unattended must have a method of contacting the local fire department. The store has an emergency phone to contact the local fire department. Based on its location and lack of signage, would a customer be able to find and use this if an emergency occurred at night? What is wrong with this? The e-stop cannot be in This is the automatic tank gauge at Effie Warren. The exchange has the Vida Root TLS for 50 plus at all of the gas stations in the U.S. Except for California. This is the annual compliance page from Inside 360. Click any of the hyperlinks to go to that month. This is the monthly compliance report from Inside 360. Print this and place in your binder every 30 days. This diagram shows all the equipment of a typical U.S. Walkthrough inspections ensure this equipment is operating as intended. These are the typical binders. Using a unique color makes them easier to find. Please subscribe and watch more of these videos to learn everything about gas stations. We've covered a lot of material. Throughout this you've seen pop-ups to other videos to learn more on specific topics. There are also links to videos in this video description. If you ever have any questions or need more information, just send me an email. Thank you for watching this. Hope you found it useful.